Real quick, I have a question for those of you who have been a fan of this channel for a minute, who you know uh, like watching my videos, or at least have seen some of my videos before. Have you ever noticed uh, that thing right there? This is one of my prized possessions. You see that signature? That is by Devin White himself. I am a huge Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, so yes, I uh, went out, and one of my more reckless purchases when we won the Super Bowl was getting a signed football from Devin White. I'm a huge fan of him as a player. I'm a huge fan of the Buccaneers, of course. I think that we don't win that Super Bowl without some of the splash plays he made in that uh, Super Bowl run, in my opinion. You could have even argued he should have been the Super Bowl MVP, although I thought Brady was probably more deserving. So this is not a uh, Devin White hater video by any means. One second, got to put the football back. Okay, things are back to normal. But uh, this is not a Devin White hater video by any means. I like a lot of what Devin White can do, but I'm also not someone who's going to ignore reality. And the reality is Devin White has not performed as well as I would have hoped he would have. I thought he was starting to turn a corner towards the end of last season was and was finally kind of going to become that complete player and live up to his potential, and he's taken two steps backwards, in my opinion. Uh, it's not to say that there's not things that he does well, but there's a lot he does poorly. And if you don't believe me, uh, you know, Pro Football Focus absolutely hates uh, his game. You see this right there with a number all the way over to the left, 88. He is the 88th ranked linebacker in football, according to them. White only passed a few guys uh, there. So he's nearly at the bottom with a total grade of 35.1. That is abysmal. Going over to a more box score style stat here, uh, you know, just receiving yards given up for a linebacker. He has given up the seventh most yards. That's what the seven is to the left. 643 yards. That's a lot of yards for a linebacker to give up because obviously if the pass goes too far deep, it's probably someone else who's going to be, you know, getting credit for giving up those yards. Now, Grant, and part of this is the Buccaneers did actually just give up uh, a little bit on the higher side of you know, passing yards in general, the 11th most, and almost of that was they, you know, they threw the ball a lot last year, so other teams just had more opportunities. Their points per drive was pretty good, but, uh, you know, bulk yards are going to be kind of a hindrance, but still, not a great stat. And I actually think this is kind of the most notable statistic before we get into the film, uh, because I think this is kind of the best, you know, way I would describe why we've kind of felt like Devin White took a step back last year, whereas the reality is he didn't exactly take a step back last year. It was more so he just didn't take a step forward is you see kind of some of these, uh, you know, splash plays, these little bit fluky, but really important stuff. So like forced fumbles uh, is the first category. He had three forced fumbles his rookie year. Uh, that's what you're looking at is rookie years at the top. Second year is the second column. Uh, third year, also known as last year, is all the way at the bottom. So his first year, he had three forced fumbles, he had four fumble recoveries, and he had two touchdowns. That that's, Those are pretty impressive numbers. His next year, not so much in terms of the forced fumbles or fumble recoveries, but still nine sacks, which is pretty great. But last year, a lot of that went down. Still had a fumble recovery, but no forced fumbles, and only three and a half sacks. So Part of that is just there's an element of flukiness to that stuff. If you're someone like what Devin White's selling point is, is you know, what he did in that playoff run was he would get beat, but then he would get an interception, and so he would make up for it, and the good by far and away outweighed the bad. But when that kind of stuff dries up, and all we've sort of been left with from Devin White is him just trying to play coverage, that's going to be a lot more difficult because that's really not where he thrives. And so now I want to talk about that exact stuff, kind of the negatives here. So let's head over and let's talk about it, starting off with this play. What's going to happen is it's going to be zone coverage, and you see the area where he's supposed to cover. It's that white, the zone that I've uh, you know, put in white, that is where Devin White is supposed to go. Didn't do that intentionally, but it works out. Right when this play begins, you see how, so there was a couple things to note. Again, one of the important things that you want to do uh, when you're a defender, it's just pay attention to how many eligible receivers are on your side of the field. For White, there were three on his side of the field, and there's two on the other side of the field, meaning that you might have to do a little bit more work on that side of the field just because there's an extra guy there. You just have to pay attention. Over to the top of the screen, so to White's left, uh, you see that he's in a pretty decent spot right there. You're doing okay. There's a corner who can come in and cover the Cooper Cup who's running a little bit further deep, so you're okay on that side of the field. Whereas closer towards the bottom of the screen, you're also okay. Levante David, the linebacker who was next to White, he's running over to cover the halfback, which is what he probably should be doing. Because again, you still only have 
two players over towards the bottom of the screen. You have a deep player as well, but if both of the eligible receivers on that side of the field are running shallow, then you know, they each have to cover those two guys, meaning you don't have help there. Despite that, White passes off that receiver to cover grass, and that should have been a completion. And this is what you don't want to do, but this is what White does far too frequently, is he ends up covering grass and leaving a player wide open. You have to make sure you're covering the right guy, and he's constantly not doing that. Again, when he's in position, he is great. I have no issue with him when he's in position. He just gets out of position far too frequently. Like, this play is an example of just like a a good play from Devin White, and this kind of goes to show, like, no, he can cover when he knows what he has to do. Like, man coverage, he tends to be pretty good at. You see where he is on the field. Uh, this is going to be just a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, and watch what he does. As you see, he's going to, you know, do a fine job at being able to cover here. Maybe if it was a perfect throw and a great catch, that's a completion, but probably not even with that. That was good defense by Devin White. So, just showing that as an example of, like, when he's in position, he's fine. He just gets out of position far too frequently and needs to do a better job of putting himself in position where then he can show off that incredible skill set. And I want to go over here because there's also just some of these, like, what are you doing Devin White plays? Like, I don't know how to describe them, but I, I think in my notes, I just put WTF plays because, like, that's exactly what the they are for Devin White is there's just these, like, why are you making this play? This is a great example. Of, like, I just don't know what he's thinking here. It's going to be man coverage, and you see where he is on the field. You see who he's supposed to cover. It's worth noting this is the cover two man, meaning that there's no help over the middle, but there is help deep. So that's the way that this play works, and then you just cover your guy. Right when this play begins, so a different player, Deshaun Jackson, who Carlton Davis is covering, is going to start to run over the middle. White sees this and wants to disrupt Deshaun Jackson. He wants to get him off of his game, which, you know, in theory, I have no real issue with. You just create some contact, you know, football's all about timing, so just, you know, kind of push him back a little bit. That's totally understandable, and you can, you know, help slow him down, because Carlton Davis is an incredible corner, but he's not the fastest corner, and Deshaun Jackson might be the fastest, like, you know, person ever. So, okay, a bit of an exaggeration, but he's known for his speed. So, being able to slow him down totally makes sense. What doesn't make sense is how he's going to go about doing this. Watch him essentially just pick Carlton Davis, where not really slowing down uh, Deshaun Jackson whatsoever, which allows for a big completion. And look at Davis. Look at him, uh, 24. He was angry, and he looked back at Devin White. He was upset at that play, and rightfully so, because now everyone's going to blame Davis for giving up that completion. But that was entirely Devin White's fault by just a, a silly mistake that should never have happened. And so White just has to clean this stuff up. He's a young player, and I think to some degree, it might have actually hurt him getting so much, you know, getting so much love after that Super Bowl run because now maybe he didn't fully grow and work on the little stuff that he has said he's going to make a conscious effort to do this offseason is to work on these little things because that's just something that should never happen. And also something like this, which like in theory isn't really a bad play by White, but it still is like a you know, what's, what are you doing here? What's, where's your head at? It's going to be a uh, zone coverage. It's a cover two zone. And you see White is, is supposed to cover that middle of the field area. Right when his play begins, he does his job well. He, you know, covers the tight end, then uh, passes him off to allow a safety to cover him, and even picks up that there's another receiver now who, Robert Woods, who could get open. So all this stuff from this point was good. This is what you want to see him do. And here's maybe one area that I thought of that might be kind of a great reason for Devin White's struggles. Devin White comes from LSU, who have consistently been very good, specifically, you know, notorious leader defenses have been very good. And it's just a theory. I don't know if this is true. But, you know, again, the three years he was there, they were very good. Uh, Ed Orgeron was there for two years. They won the national championship the year after he left. But still, uh, you know, they were a very good team, and part of me feels like he could kind of just do his role, and everyone had sort of more of a just do your role mindset, which you do more in college, especially if you're a good college team. It's often how you win at the college level. But the issue is on a play like this, White has to do more than his role now. The NFL is just, just a different animal, and sometimes you have to be a little bit creative, and you have to see, okay, if Robert Woods is running up there, I have to cover him here. White doesn't really do that. He kind of undercuts it a little bit, but if that's a good throw, that is a completion, and just not a great play from White. White should have stayed deep 
with Robert Woods. He did not do that. And if he did, that's a great play from White. So that's kind of the frustration, right? It's because you see the skill set and you see how things can work when it's at its best. It just sometimes doesn't do that. As for the run defense, which Pro Football Focus has as the worst in football among linebackers, which I do kind of see. Like I can see why they would do that because his batting average wasn't great. And again, that's kind of my thing with White, right? He's a low batting average guy who can hit a lot of home runs. And the issue is last year, the home runs weren't really there. So now you're just a low batting average guy who isn't doing much. Uh, so I think to me, the home runs are going to come regardless, but you got to get that batting average up. That's how I view Devin White as a player. What's going to happen here is you see how this play is supposed to work. You see where he is on the field. He's the one I've circled in white. It's going to be a double team. Uh, then the right tackle gets off the double team, goes up to block white. And as you see, I mean, that's exactly what's going to happen. White really gets knocked out of the way. And this is something that happened a surprising amount of the time is white would really not win too much, which is something that's odd and something that I feel like is kind of, I've always felt like is a strength of White since he's at least a good run defender, but he wasn't last year. He just, there's no getting around it. If you watch the tape, you notice that he certainly wasn't. And maybe part of that is there wasn't the running lanes for him to shoot up and be able to, you know, make those tackles that there have been last year. I, I think that that's probably true because the defensive line did take a step back, but still like it's, you know, it's still true. So that's kind of my, my thoughts on Devin White as a whole, as a player. Like Devin White, I'm not willing to give up on him yet by any means, but I don't think he's done a lot great outside of that postseason run, which, listen, if that's all he does well for the Buccaneers, you know, draft pick well spent, right? Like, you'll certainly take a fifth overall draft pick for a guy that helps you win a Super Bowl. So, regardless, I, you know, I'm very happy with what Devin White has brought to this team, not just with that, but also, you know, known for being a leader, which is obviously very cool, all of that good stuff. However, uh, I think if he doesn't turn up, you know, pick up his game before too long, I personally think that, you know, th this might not be a great thing for Tampa Bay. And quite frankly, you know, he's not someone I'd be looking to trade for. I guess that's what I would say if I'm a GM. But that's also not to say that he can't turn it around and improve. And I hope he does. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.